I'm going to give you the secret sauce to investing in the short-term rentals, AKA Airbnbs on this episode. And I'm also going to tell you what I do not do first. And I'm going to start you off with that. It is starting with data. And I know many of you may be shocked because I talk about running performas and the data, and it's an important part, but really everything else is how you build super properties. So if you are looking to go and achieve and move from the 50th percentile to the 75th to the 90th, and then you want to escalate to where I'm at, which runs 50 to 60% above that 90th percentile, the data is not going to get you there. And that's what I want you to understand. Now, understand what I'm saying here. For me, I've purchased 70 short-term rentals. I just closed on one three days ago. 70 short-term rentals since 2018. There were three before that. So technically 73 in my career. And what I've learned is, is when I was new when I was doing this, I needed to look at the data. And unfortunately, I didn't in my first two. Got lucky on my first one, to be very honest with you. But number two, I made a huge mistake and it cost me over a hundred grand because I didn't use data. I didn't underwrite it. But here's what happens is most of you are getting into paralysis by analysis. I see it in my inner circle. I see it in my mastermind. I see it in all these Facebook groups. I can't find a property. It doesn't pencil out. Well, one, because you don't really know how to look. Two, you don't know what you're looking for. Three, you don't truly know how to underwrite it. And think about it. Intangibles in any business is what escalates somebody to the top tier or above the norm. You can hit singles all day long by following the performa. Performas are there to mitigate risk, not to make revenue buying decisions when you are making the biggest investment of your life, most likely. Think about that. How many businesses have you started? Hmm? I've done 34 startups at this point. All those businesses that I've started, I've never made more than a $100,000 investment ever, ever. So this is the biggest single investment, at least that I'm making. And even in some of the other bigger deals I've done, I've never put over a half a million dollars into it ever. This is huge. We got to nail this. And it's not good enough just to be good anymore. You're making the single biggest investment in your life. I think you would want to follow along the way that I, ro I roll. And that's how I am going all freaking in, all in. And when I go all in, I'm all in to maximize that return on investment. That's why when I'm looking at starting a business, and that's what you're doing when you invest into an Airbnb, a short-term rental, you're starting a business. And I, I'm not going to go into, you know, one property, one LLC, one bank account, one credit card, don't commingle funds and asset protection and accounting and all that type of stuff. I'll leave that to Ryan Bakey and Jeff Hampton, the, you know, the, the tax and the legal experts. What I'm talking about here is how to identify a property that can become a super property that will outperform the entire market. Let me say that again. A super property is a property that outperforms the entire market. It is not the biggest, most badass property. It's not the best design. It's not the best location. It's not the best proximity. It's not the best murals. It's all of that shit. It's all of it. All of that goes into building a super property on a finite budget. I can't emphasize that enough. You can't break the bank in designing that property because the design st start is here. And here's the number one thing. This is what I want, I want you to look at. The first thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for the canvas. Write that down. So I have the outdoor canvas to be able to work with, and my wife has the indoor canvas. Here's what happens. Anybody can go in and hire my wife or hire a great designer to come in and do the interior design. And I'm not discrediting that at all. She does the best job out of anybody in this industry in maximizing every single dollar that we spend. And that's what I'm talking about when we're building a super property. Now, I take the outside. Now, this is a condo. I can't change the crappy you know, barbecue and sitting area that they have outside. I can't change that literally the side of, uh, you know, the building, the hardy boards falling off. But what I can change is why the average one bedroom condo in this place does $19,000 a year by the property manager that manages them. 19 grand. The best location on the freaking mountain. That's where I step in and they do zero marketing. I assume they do. I don't know what she does or what that company does, to be honest with you. But I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and leverage the proximity to that 
chair one ski lift on Whitefish Mountain that takes you to the summit to the top of the mountain and chair two, which is even closer, which is about 67 steps from the door of the condo to get to that chair lift. 67. 67 is going to be the number that I'm going to hang my hat on from a marketing perspective. It's not going to be a short walk. It's not going to be, you know, a, a short drive or, you know, a 30 second stroll. It is going to be 67 steps to be on the chairlift. That's marketing folks. So for me to ascend above that $19,000 is easy. I can do that just with some very remedial design and revenue management. So that'll probably put me into the 50th percentile. To get to that 75th percentile, I just need to be better at revenue management and have better design and add a couple of amenities, honestly, and I can get there. Now to get to the 90th percentile, I need to start implementing some listing optimization. I need to have good photo order. I need to still tell a story, you know, and I stage the countertop. I stage everything that's inside of there and I tell a story to where people are going to want to stay there. Now to get above, I've got to dominate revenue management. That means I'm doing physical revenue management and I've got to dominate marketing. And I have researched every single condo in this complex and the building down from us. It doesn't have its prime locations, but the units are nicer and a little bit bigger and nobody does any marketing. So I am going to accentuate that short walk. I am going to be the one that is building all the assets outside that I have no control over in a condo and bringing them inside. I'm going to let them know that, hey, it's literally like, I have to probably use some time here, like a one minute walk or 150 yards to get to hell roaring. You know, I'm just down the street from the beer stube. And when you get off the slopes and you literally ride your snowboard right into our front door, then you can literally walk to the beer stube in about 10 seconds. You have the beer stube, you have Ed and Molly's, you've got hell roaring, you have all these options that I'm marketing. I'm not marketing just the condo. I'm marketing about what my buyers, what my guests can do around the condo without having to take an Uber, without having to walk, without having to navigate snowy roads, all of those things, because that's my competitive advantage. That is where I'm hanging my hat. That is the first thing that I looked at when I saw this on Zillow. And I said, holy shit, this is the closest building to the chair lift number one and number two. But if I want to elevate above everybody else, one, I bought location. Two, I bought proximity and nobody can beat that. Nobody. That's my competitive advantage. Now I have to market it. Where you make a mistake is you add the hot tub, you add the barrel sauna, you put up murals, you have a great location, you have great proximity, but you don't market it. You wait for people to come to you and to figure that out. That is the fundamental difference between me and you is that I am an opportunist. And a lot of people think that the word opportunist is a negative connotation of people that take an, an opportunity when it shouldn't be theirs, or they're always looking for the opportunity. F in a right, I'm looking for the opportunity. I'm looking for the opportunity to market my business, to market my properties, to show that to more people that will be interested in a very targeted way. That's why I use Facebook ads. And I will be running Facebook ads all over the freaking country for now my four properties in Montana, because it's one of the most desirable vacation places in our country. It's beautiful. It's untouched. Who doesn't want to go to Montana? Who doesn't want to go to Montana and go skiing? Well, I guess people from Florida or whatever that, you know, hate the cold, but I can target these people that love skiing. I can target people that love fly fishing. I can target people that want to go to national parks. It's about the marketing and it's very narrow. So I get a high conversion. You can do the exact same thing. Check, if you never run Facebook ads before, I make it super simple. With Chris, my CEO, we've done over $15 million in Facebook ads over the years. All you need to start with is a dollar a day budget to showcase the unique value propositions about your property. And if you can do that and put it in front of the right people, then you're going to win. Because 99.9% .9 of the other hosts that you're competing against are not doing that. So I'll link up right down below my Facebook ads training course that you can go through and literally in one day, you can learn how to deploy Facebook ads, set up retargeting, use the number one, the number one tool in digital marketing in the world for anything is a custom audience tied to a lookalike audience inside Facebook. Chris is going to walk you through step by step exactly how to do that. You can do free marketing, buy, sell trade groups. You need to be building an email list. So I email stuff to my past guests and I use StayFi. If you're not using StayFi, even if you have a one bedroom condo, look, I've got a property that sleeps 38 people. The new Montana, the big house that I did, Whitefish Retreat, that's going to sleep, I think, 26. And all the way down to four at this one bedroom condo, master suite, king bed, 
queen size pullout sofa. That's four people. I'm still going to use StayFi. So that way I can capture all four people. Then I can email market to them. Then I can take the list of every guest, my ideal buyer. This is exactly who I'm looking for. I can take the list of every guest that stayed with me, put it into market my STR. And literally I can start email funneling. So I email them, I text them, I even do voice drops. If you don't know what a voice drop is, you need to learn what a voice drop is. It's my secret weapon. And I'll give it to you right here. You don't even have to do anything for it. It's literally when I send you a voicemail, it just goes straight to your phone. It doesn't ring. And then they say, oh shoot, I must've missed that call. Bill just left me a voicemail. Awesome. And then you can personalize it and you can do it in mass, just like text messages, just like email marketing. So folks, the moral of the story today is that you need to market your property. You need to be marketing. And I'm not just talking about listing optimization. I'm going to break this down for you before I go. Number one is listing optimization. You've got to be on the first page and you need to be in the top half of the first page. Number two is going to be Facebook ads. I run $5 a day uh, per property. That's $150 a month. That's nothing. That's like two dinners at Applebee's these days. You know, it used to be pre-COVID. You could probably get four dinners out of it, but everything is getting more expensive. So $150 a day. I mean, if I can't get one booking out of my Facebook ads to offset the cost, then I don't know what the heck I'm doing by any means. Then I'm doing email marketing. So I have StayFi in all of my properties. I'm building my email list. I've got about 4,700 past guests on my email list right now. And I use my 200-day funnel that is available. If you're a Market My STR customer, um, then you have access to that 200-day funnel. And you should be using that for all of your guests to be able to bring them back. There's a reason I'm doing 41% direct bookings. And it's because of that 200-day funnel and using Market My STR. If you're not using Market My STR, you're crazy. Because you've got text message marketing, email marketing, your direct booking websites. You've got an app to where you can have VAs use the app. You can track everything, all the communication. You can host your videos. It does everything for you. Well, it doesn't do everything for you. It's a software. You can do everything with it, right? So, and then the buy, sell, trade groups. Target the five cities that people are visiting you from the most and join like 10 buy, sell, trade groups in every one of those cities. Then you go in and once a, once a week, or not once a week, you go into that city number one and you drop a post in the buy, sell, trade about your property. Then you go to city number two, city number three, city number four, city number five. Then in week number six, you come back to city number one and you just put it on a rotation. Those are the secret sauces, folks, on how you can ascend. It's not about anything else, but it's about value stacking all of it. You value stack the location, the proximity, the interior design, the exterior design. So even properties like me, I like separation. I like creating leverage. That's why I have two hot tubs at many of my properties. And instead of spending... $35,000 on a swim spa, like a lot of people do, or $100,000 on a mod pool, I buy two $5,000 hot tubs from my wholesaler just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, instead of buying that one arcade game that has 4,000 or 50,000 games in it, whatever it is, 400 games, honestly, and then it breaks and you have none, you put that one arcade game in your game room and you let me stack up five one-up arcade games for the same price, I'm going to crush you every time in the marketing because of the visual component of seeing Pac-Man, Galaga, you know, Street Fighter, NFL Blitz, Shaq, NBA Jam, boom, 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 boom. And you've got one right in the middle. I'm going to fucking crush you. So you need to think about from the second that you see that property in Zillow, you need to think about how you're going to market it. That's what I'm thinking. That's the, literally the decision is going to be made if I'm going to move forward with a property when I first see the listing. Do I have the outdoor canvas? Does it have the marketability? If it doesn't, can I create it? And if I can't answer yes to those two questions in 30 seconds, boom, I move on and I'm looking at the next property. Now, once I decide that I'm going to buy the property, that's when I go into performa mode. Good, better, best, a minimum of running three performas, but that's only going to be on probably a conventional 30-year loan. Now, if I'm going to run a DSCR, if I plan on doing a cost seg, if I'm going to go to the local commercial bank and look at 20 year terms. If I'm going to go to a credit union, I'm running all of those different financial scenarios into my performance and not only figure out what term length I want, what property I'm buying in the market and the sub market, but I'm also looking at the options because that's going to directly affect my debt pay down. Let that sink in. Marketability, how you're structuring everything, and then back to marketability. And then you design your property for your ideal buyer because you're going to market to him or her. I market to wealthy Wendy, regardless whether it's that 38 bedroom 
or, or 38 occupancy or it's four, I'm always marketing to wealthy Wendy because I want to ascend and charge what everybody is charging above me. And I want you to do the exact same thing. Focus on these things and you can get above the 90th percentile, which is where I live. I promise you. Make sure you smash that subscribe button so that way when I release the next one, you get notified. I'll see you on the next episode.